Okay, this is my curator system at home. There's a lot of traffic now that we have a full house here in um, and getting these flows from my PSNs box. There's a separate series of videos on PSNs and curator. Uh, you can see the PDF that is on the uh, pointed by the video description of all my videos. But uh, again, getting flow data here, and I'm interested in seeing if anyone is going out from my house into a remote system and that system has bad reputation. Well, we have the X-Force. How do we build a search for that? And I'm going to do some videos that show how you create these searches later, but I have the search already created. Let's review it quickly. So we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be taking the destination IP as the first column. We're going to take that IP, call the X-Force IP category function to see if there is data. You're going to get an NA if there's no reputation or malware or scanning IP or whatever is the reputation, the, the category that he gets from the X-Force. And we're going to call that column bad. We're going to sum the total data that goes to that destination and we're going to cast that as long to make sure we don't run out of space. We call that column total bytes out from the flows because we're in the flows uh, uh, database. And, but we want to filter some things. Well, if bad is NA, meaning there's no category for that IP, I don't care about it. I only care for the ones that have a category. And also I want the ones that has data that is more than zero. It's just, you know, something strange that doesn't get any reply. I'm, I'm not interested in that. I, I'm interested in meaningful uh, conversations. And finally, I want to filter also when the traffic is going out. And you do that using this flow direction equals to local to remote. We group those by destination IP, but here's the expensive part. I want you to do this for 365 days. So go and retrieve all your flows and sum this thing and you know give them to me. Well, let's see how long it takes. This is not a production system. This is a demo system. So I don't run the system uh, constantly here. I normally revert to a snapshot for my demo. So uh, I don't expect this to take a, a great deal of time. But yet, you know, it's, it's, it needs to go into the database and look for... Uh, anything uh, uh, a year ago. So let's actually click here, search, and see how fast this goes. It's going, well, actually, that was that was <laughs> very quick. Uh, but uh, you can, uh, I sorted this uh, on ascending and uh, descending order. But uh, you can see that this can be a very expensive type of search, right, in, in a production environment. And, and our objective, uh, uh, this is part of the Pulse videos uh, series, is that we want to create a dashboard in Pulse that will have the results of this search and will be updated every minute. Well, if we do it the standard way, that's going to be a very a taxing or expensive proposition on the system. But Curita has an amazing trick that I wasn't aware of. My friend Mutas recently told me about it called Global Views. And what Global Views are is a separate database that doesn't have uh, flows or, or logs. What it has is counters or accumulators. They, so, for example, for flows per minute, event per second, Curator is so quick putting that information uh, in QDI or anywhere that you ask for it because instead of going and retrieving all the flows or all the uh, logs, it actually goes and reads the accumulator. The, there are searches that are running constantly and those accumulators get updated. So when I query for that type of data, I'm going to the accumulator and that's what this is so fast. So we want to use that trick to create a Pulse dashboard that will be good in terms of performance. Let's see how we do that. So the first step that we need to do is actually save this search. So we click here, save. We're going to call it uh, my data going out, the name of the search. And we don't need to, we're not going to use it for anything. We just need to make sure that there's a search created because the system will be running this search uh, every minute. We see that later. So we see that we have the search, my data going out, being saved. Now, how do I create accumulators for it? That's the part that is not uh, necessarily intuitive. So if I go here into this the icon, I get this standard chart. If I go here on the gear to modify that, and I select from here, time series, then is when I'm presented with this capture time series. These are the accumulators I was talking about. So let me actually select 
the column that we have, the sum of destination bytes, this one here, and we're going to say, say every minute capture this data and put it in the accumulators and we're going to click here save. And we should get a confirmation here and th there it is. And that means that Curator created an accumulator for this. In fact, you can see the accumulators, the standard ones and the one that we just created by going into the admin tab here, aggregated data management. And in here, uh, this is of the type uh, time series, right? Let me sort this by last modified date, or I can search by the name. Uh, but let me access things going to be quicker like this. Uh, actually, in reverse order. My data going out. And if we double click in it, we see the column that we have some destination byte, total data going out, my data going out. Very good. So we have the. Uh, the accumulator uh, created for it. Let's actually go into Pulse and create a dashboard. Let's add a dashboard, you know, here, part of this search. Uh, uh, this is for uh, example, uh, let's call it my data going out. And this, of course, is going to be an AQL search. So the search, let's build it little by little. So we're going to be doing a select like everyone else, but we're going to select everything from, and the database here is called Global View, this one over here. And the, there are two parameters that we need to pass to it. The first parameter is the name of the search that we save and we create accumulators for, and it was called My Data going out. And the second parameter is how frequently do you want it. Typically these things are one minute and that's what, it, what the normal denotes. You can put here hourly or daily in order to, to change that, right? So let's uh, run that query and see what we get. Yeah, we get one IP here. That's actually pretty good because remember this thing is going to run every minute and it's going to put some some data in here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to generate more traffic uh, that that is malicious that's going to have bad uh, IP reputation in order to see more things in here actually I can just modify this search and go for the last uh, 24 hours I should give me more data than just that. Let's actually run the query. Yeah, okay. So now let's add in here, for example, the sum of all the destination bytes are sent. So let's, instead of getting everything here, let's start with the destination IP. I like to run the queries as I build them, so I know if I made a mistake or I made it. So that's that table there. Let's put uh, here the sum of bytes. So, so that's the second column. Let's put a space there to look at better. So sum destination by, when we run it, we see those destination by. And we can put more stuff in here. Let's say we want to put a timestamp. We can put, uh, you know, well, the, the, the date form and I put the timestamp. Uh, let's actually put that. So let's put uh, date format. Yeah, that's what we want. And then uh, this is standard stuff. 1000. And then put the format. We want it to be year with four numbers and then the month and then the day, right? I'm not putting this right because this is, that's what got the thing confused. And I put that in there. And let's call this uh, timestamp. So we're gonna call that, color, that column time stamp. Let's see if I did this right. Let me run the query again. 
no, it's a mistake. Let me check and see what I did wrong. I think what it is, I, I need a comma to separate all the columns. I did not put a comma. I think that that's what I did wrong. Let's run it again. Yep. So we got enough data in here. Now, what we want to do is actually create a view for it. It's actually called the view uh, data going out just for the chart type. We're gonna select a pie chart. Can be, you know, anything. So in here it says, well, what label do you want to put? Let's put destination IP. What value do you want to select? The only one is that we, the, we have in here is the sum of those bytes. Why I didn't take it? Uh, actually, that's <laughs> quite a bit of uh, of IPs. Let's reduce this uh, last uh, ten minutes. See if we get something more. Meaningful in there. Let's let's crowd it. Well, it looks like I overdid it. F firing a bunch of uh, malicious flows from my attacks that I have recorded. But um, what we have achieved is actually we can even save this, right? And then we can see it. Uh, we should be able to see it. Oh, we need to add one. Actually, I almost forgot. We click here, done, and then in this same view, we should see on the bottom here that that view in here. This thing is going to be updating every minute, and that search won't be expensive because all I'm doing is retrieving the sum of destination bytes from counters that I have in the database. In the next videos, I'm going to be doing some uh, usage of accumulators or counters that Curator has. For example, flows per minute and offenses and stuff like that.